Welcome again to the tutorials on dynamic system modeling and control. Uh, once again, my name is Hossam Fathi, and it's great to have you on these tutorials. The purpose of this particular tutorial is to solve a, a very simple partial differential equation model of heat conduction using Modelica. And uh, more specifically, we're going to have three goals for this tutorial. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, uh, so far we've been building lumped parameter models of uh, dynamic systems in these tutorials and the expression lumped parameter here refers to the fact that um, we have a finite number of state variables representing any dynamic system we're trying to model in this particular tutorial I'm going to explore very very um, on a very superficial level the modeling of systems with an infinite number of state variables those systems are called distributed parameter systems and uh, very often we find ourselves modeling them using partial differential equations instead of ordinary differential equations. I'm not going to go through the theory of PDE modeling of uh, dynamic systems in any level of detail. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate PDE modeling of system dynamics using a very simple heat conduction problem and that's going to be our first goal. The second goal is going to be to explore how we can take these PDE models and discretize them using uh, the finite difference method. The finite difference method is perhaps one of the simplest and most naive, not necessarily the most efficient or anywhere near the most efficient method for discretizing partial differential equation models. But it, it does tend to be one of the first uh, methods taught in a course on uh, or in a tutorial on the numerical solution of partial differential equations because it is very simple. And then the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the discretized PDE models of heat conduction and uh, I'm going to show you how to code it up in Modelica and how to simulate it in Modelica. In the process of doing so, I'm going to show you how to write a for loop in Modelica, uh, which is um, interesting because it gives us the ability to write uh, essentially vectors of state equations in Modelica using a loop instead of having to write each one manually. So without further ado, moving on to the first goal, which is to explore the creation of PDE models in Modelica, uh, or PDE models of dynamic systems in general. The motivating problem that I'm going to explore here is heat conduction in a rod. So basically I want you to picture a, a rod of uniform material throughout um, let's assume for simplicity that um, the properties of this rod are invariant with uh, direction. Um, in other words, it doesn't really matter whether we're looking at the axial direction or the radial direction. Uh, whichever direction it is, um, the, uh, the, the heat conduction coefficient and other properties of the rod are the same. As a matter of fact, uh, the way we've idealized this as a rod here essentially means that we only care about um, heat transfer in the axial direction of the rod. The rod has a constant cross-sectional area. Um, we're going to say that it has a length L and a cross-sectional area A. Uh, we're going to assume that it has it is made of a material whose density is rho in kilograms per meter cubed and whose specific heat capacity is Cp. And remember, specific heat capacity is always in joules per kilogram Kelvin uh, if you use the SI units. Um, we are going to simplify this problem as much as we can and this is a very typical simplification in uh, the introductory literature on solving uh, heat transfer PDEs. We're going to assume that heat is transferred through the ends of the rod only, the two ends on the right hand side and left hand side. In other words, there's no heat transfer between the rod and any other environment um, along the length of the rod. When, um, when heat is transferred um, along the length of the rod. It's only transferred within the rod. It's not transferred to the outside environment. So heat transfer between the rod and the outside environment takes place only through the ends or the edges. Um, and we're going to assume that this rod, for simplicity, has the following boundary conditions. The left-hand side of the rod is immersed in a medium that has a constant temperature that we're going to refer to as T high, let's say boiling water or something like that and the right hand side of the rod is immersed in another environment or another medium whose temperature is a constant low temperature that we're going to refer to as T low. And what I would like to explore is the question of how to model and simulate the heat transfer in this rod over time or the heat transfer through this rod over time. Uh, 
Now, we need to be careful here because in steady state, of course, uh, there will be a relatively simple solution to this heat transfer problem. Um, but that's a steady state solution. I want to explore a dynamic solution using the tools of system dynamics. I want to see the transients that happen. When I take this rod, for example, and I put it at room temperature, and then suddenly I immerse it into these two media with the high and low temperatures, what happens to the temperature inside the rod in this transient process as um, temperatures increase and decrease in order to um, allow heat to be conducted to the outside world, basically through the, the two ends of the rod? That's the question I want to answer, and so I want to build, model, and simulate a conduction heat transfer model um, through this rod over time, but it's a dynamic model that I'm interested in. In order to build this dynamic model, I need to recall the basic laws of heat transfer, uh, in particular Fourier's uh, law of heat conduction. Okay, Now, for a simple linear uh, medium undergoing heat conduction, we can apply Fourier's law of heat conduction to uh, something like this rod in the following manner. First of all, I'm going to chop up the rod into slices, into small slices. And here's one slice of the rod. I'm going to draw an axis, the x-axis, along the length of the rod. And I'm going to say that at the left end of this slice, the temperature, capital T, is a function of location x and time t. Now, please forgive me for this uh, slight um, inconsistency of notation here. So far, we've been using x of t as our state variable. But now, here, x is our um, position along the length of the rod. Time is still t, and um, our state variable is going to actually end up being capital T of, uh, as a function of x and t, as a function of distance and time. And you notice how, because we have an infinite number of locations along the rod, we already have an infinite number of state variables. Uh, this slice of rod that I've chopped up, I'm going to make its thickness or width delta x. And so at the other end of that slice, the temperature is just a little different. Um, it is not equal to t of x and t. It's equal to t of x and t plus a small change. And um, essentially using a truncation of the Taylor series expansion, that small change is equal to the slope of the temperature um, profile with respect to distance, partial t by partial x, multiplied by the thickness delta x. And that's, of course, an approximation. So with this in mind, uh, Fourier's law of heat conduction says that the heat conducted through the left face of the rod is basically equal to a conductivity coefficient, kappa or k in this case, times the cross-sectional area of the rod A multiplied by the temperature gradient, partial T by partial X. And uh, remember heat transfer, conduction heat transfer, heat transfer in general, occurs opposite to a temperature gradient. It happens from high temperatures to low temperatures, hence the negative sign. So the heat flux or heat flow rate, actually, I apologize, on the left side of the rod is equal to negative Ka times partial T by partial X. On the right-hand side of the rod, the equation gets a little more complicated because partial T by partial X grows or it changes. Um, the heat out of the right face of the rod is still negative K times A multiplied by not just partial T by partial X, but the change in partial T by partial X also which is approximated using the Taylor series expansion as partial squared t by partial x squared times delta x. So those are the heat flow rates into and out of the right and left faces of, of this chop or this slice of the rod. Now I want to apply the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says that heat flowing into this slice of the rod minus heat flowing out is equal to the rate of change of internal energy stored in the slice of the rod. So heat in is negative Ka dt by dx, or partial t by partial x. Heat out is minus, but I need to subtract that. So I end up with a plus Ka times partial t by partial x plus partial squared t by partial x squared delta x. And that whole expression on the left-hand side of the equation has to equal the rate of change with respect to time of the heat stored inside this slice of the rod. Now, the heat stored inside the slice of the rod is equal to the mass of the slice, density times area times thickness, multiplied by specific heat capacity, multiplied by temperature.
So we end up with this equation here representing the first law of thermodynamics. The first thing we notice, of course, is that Ka partial T by partial X is repeated twice on the left-hand side of the equation with positive and negative signs, so these cancel. Once we cancel them, we notice that the entire equation is multiplied by delta X, so for a sufficiently small delta X, we can simplify and remove delta X. And what we end up with is that Ka partial squared T by partial X squared is equal to rho ACP partial T with respect to time. And then finally, we can cancel the two areas and end up with K times partial squared T by partial X squared is equal to rho CP times the partial derivative of temperature with respect to time. This is the governing heat transfer, the governing partial differential equation for heat transfer in the rod. So we've derived the governing PDE for heat transfer in the rod. So that completes essentially the first goal of this tutorial, which is to explore the creation of PDEs representing simple heat transfer problems. The second thing I want to do is I want to explore how to discretize these PDEs using one of the simplest discretization methods out there, the finite difference methods, and ultimately the goal being to simulate this heat transfer problem in Modelica. So in order to uh, discretize using finite differences, I want to recall the motivating problem here, which is that I have a rod. One end of it is immersed in a high temperature medium, and the other end is immersed in a low temperature medium. And so I'm going to begin discretization by declaring that the leftmost location of this rod corresponds to x is equal to 0. The rightmost location corresponds to x is equal to L, the length of the rod. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, chop up this rod into finite pieces. Now we're not doing infinitesimal derivations anymore. We're not doing trying to derive a PDE. We're trying to discretize the PDE. And so now we're going to slice up the rod into finite length slices. And essentially we're going to put nodes on the rod at finite spaced locations. The first location is going to be the leftmost location. And I'm going to give that an index i is equal to 0. And then after that, there's another location with an index i is equal to 1, index i is equal to 2. The very last location has an index i is equal to n, where n is the number, essentially, of slices that I want to slice the rod into. And as a result, if I use a uniform discretization, uniform finite difference discretization of this rod, what I'm saying is that the width of each slice is equal to the whole length of the rod, L, divided by the number of slices, n. Okay, Now, with this in mind, it's very easy to see that the boundary conditions translate into that the temperature at index 0 is always equal to T high, and the temperature at index n is always equal to T low. These are not differential equations. These are algebraic equations corresponding to the boundary conditions. So T0 and Tn are not actually going to be state variables in my state space model. However, when I look at the PDE, it applies everywhere else other than the boundaries. The PDE says that K times partial squared T by partial X squared is rho CP times partial T by partial time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discretize this PDE. I'm going to apply this PDE at every index I from 1 all the way to N minus 1. So what I end up with is rho CP times T1 dot is equal to the partial derivative of t with respect to x squared times k evaluated at i is equal to 1. And the same happens as i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, and so on. In other words, for every value of i between 1 and n minus 1, rho cp ti dot, where ti is now a state variable, is equal to k times the simplest approximation I can do of a second uh, derivative. One of the simplest approximations I can do of a second derivative is the finite difference approximation. I'm going to use central differences for this approximation. And so I'm going to get the temperature T at I plus 1 minus 2 times the temperature T at point I plus the temperature T at point I minus 1 divided by the discretization length squared, which is L over N squared. Okay. Now remember, we're using finite differences here. 
finite differences are among the simplest ways to discretize PDEs. There are more sophisticated ways to discretize PDEs, but I just want to give you an introduction to the use of Modelica for solving very, very simple partial differential equation models. Okay? Now, what's interesting here is that our state variables in this discretized PDE model are T1, T2, all the way to Tn minus 1. So we've succeeded in simplifying this model, which is a distributed parameter model, which has an infinite number of governing uh, differential equations for an infinite number of state variables. We have succeeded in simplifying this into an ordinary differential equation model, um, essentially a state space model with a finite number of state variables. But that's an approximation. The state variables are T1 through Tn minus 1. And what I've outlined in red here, that's our set of state equations. Okay? Now, with this, we have finished the two first goals of the tutorial, which are to explore the creation of PDE models for a simple heat conduction problem. And number two, to explore the discretization of these models using finite differences. What is left here is to solve this PDE model using Medelica. Um, I want to show you how to do that. Um, mostly because I want to show you how to incorporate for loops into Modelica because they happen to be very, very convenient. So with that in mind, let's move on to the Modelica uh, Connection Editor, OM Edit. And what I've done is I've created a model for you called the Conduction PDE Example Model. And the code for this model is very simple. We've seen a lot of this before. The parameter values in this model are made up, and I strongly encourage you to take this model and actually insert real parameter values for real materials into this model and see how the results change if you were to build a rod out of steel or out of aluminum or out of copper or glass um, how the speed at which the rods temperature the, the the speed with which the rods temperature reacts to external stimuli um, how that changes basically depending on how conductive the material is. It's, it's a very interesting exercise and uh, the results of, of this exercise are pretty intuitive. Um, so um, the parameters for this model are the density of the material, the specific heat capacity of the material, the length of the rod, the heat conductivity of the material, um, the uh, low temperature and the high temperature that I've immersed the ends of the rod in, those I've chosen to correspond to ice and boiling water just for the fun of it. Um, I want to give this rod an initial temperature. I've given it an initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So what I'm saying here is that the rod is initially at a temperature that is uh, somewhat of an elevated room temperature. So think of the rod being in a fairly warm room. And then suddenly I immerse it into an environment where one end is in ice and the other end is in boiling water. Um, I can choose different levels of discretization of this model, essentially different numbers of nodes for my finite difference model. Um, I've picked n is equal to 10 here, so essentially I'll be slicing up the rod into 10 slices. If I want a more accurate discretization, I can make n bigger. If I want a less accurate discretization, uh, I can make n smaller. Uh, you can't make it too small, of course, because then uh, you wouldn't even be able to implement the PDE. You notice that T0 and Tn are given, and the PDE is only applied for T1 through Tn minus 1. So um, n had better be 2 or more if you even want to be able to implement um, a discretization of the PDE. And of course, for the sake of accuracy, you want to make n larger and larger and larger. The price you pay is that the larger the number of discretizations, the more computationally expensive this model is going to be. Now, my state variables are only t1 through tn minus 1. So I'm going to declare a vector of state variables. It's a real vector t, but it only has n minus 1 entries. And my um, discretization length is actually the length of the rod L divided by n. You'll notice a new section in this model that you haven't seen in Modelica models before in these tutorials, which is the initial equation section. The initial equation section allows us to initialize the state variables of this model. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going through uh, the index i equaling 1 to n minus 1. And I'm setting ti equal to t in it only initially. The initial equation section only applies uh, 
at the first moment of simulating the model. And then we go to the equation section. Essentially, the equations I want to implement for the state variables are the state equations we derived in the slides, which are that rho cp times ti dot is always equal to k times ti plus 1 minus 2 ti minus uh, plus ti minus 1 divided by L over n squared. You'll notice that I've written this equation separately for the first node and last node for, t's, for i is equal to 1 and i is equal to n minus 1. And then I have a loop that applies this differential equation, this state equation, for i equals 2 through n minus 2. And here's the reason I've done that. Um, when I apply this uh, set of state equations to t1, I need to use the value of t0 in my equation. But t0 is the same as t high, and so I need to change the actual coding of the equation a little bit. So I do that separately. Similarly, when I apply this uh, state equation to t n minus 1, I need to apply it to t n. I need to invoke t n in my state equation. But t n is the same as t low, and so I need to write that separately. And so I do. Okay. I could have written this code in several different ways, some of which are more elegant than others, but the point is this. I've written a loop um, or a set of code that allows me to say that regardless of the value of n, whether it's 10, 20, 30, or 50, my equation, my governing equation that corresponds to the PDE for every state, every discretized state, is rho cp ti dot is equal to k times ti plus 1 minus 2ti plus ti minus 1 divided by delta x squared. Now what I want to do is I want to simulate this model. I'm going to simulate it for one second, and I want to see what I get. Okay, So here's what happens. If you look at the simulation results, I want to show t high and t low versus time. And of course, they're always 0 and 100 degrees. But in between, I want to show t1, t2, t3, all the way to t9 also. And here's what you notice. Um, eventually, after some time, uh, the distribution of temperature along the length of the rod becomes linear. The edge of the rod that is attached to the 100 degree heat source is at 100 degrees. The edge of the rod that's attached to the 0 degree heat source is at 0 degrees. And the points that are in the middle are at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way to 90 degrees. And that makes sense. But there is a heat transfer transient that takes place where some of the points are warming up very quickly from 30 degrees Celsius, the initial condition, all the way up to 90 or 80 or 70 degrees. Some of the points are cooling down uh, from the initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, they overshoot, they overcool a little bit, and then they come back up, uh, and uh, they, um, they reach a temperature of... 10, 20, uh, in one case, they come back to 30 degrees Celsius, okay? And that behavior seems to be intuitive behavior. But one question I want to ask you, and I want to leave that as a piece of food for thought, is how much faith do we have in the correctness of this simulation? And the question I really want to ask you is, when we discretize this model um, as... Uh, using the finite difference method by chopping it up and slicing it up along the length of the rod into 10 slices. Did we really have enough slices to get an accurate representation of the dynamics of temperature in this rod? Do we really trust, essentially, the graph that we have in front of us? What if we used fewer discretizations or more discretizations in space? How does the number of discretizations affect accuracy? I can ask a similar question about the solver that we're using in the time domain. How does the, the solver affect the accuracy of our time domain solution? As a matter of fact, how does our use of the finite difference method affect the accuracy of our solution? These are all questions you should think about. Uh, I will leave them for you as pieces of food for thought. Um, I strongly encourage you to play with this Modelica code, fidget with it, um, see what you can do to make it run more accurately, perhaps faster, see what the trade-offs between simulation speed and accuracy are. Um, but at this point, we're done with the goals of this specific tutorial.
namely building a PDE model of a heat transfer problem, very simple heat transfer problem, seeing how we can discretize it using finite differences, and then seeing how we can implement the resulting discretization in open Medelica. Thank you very much for uh, listening, and I look forward to the next tutorial with you.